Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Chris Vermeulen from the TechnicalTraders.com. Welcome back to the show, Chris. Thanks for having me, Jim. Chris, the Saudi uh, explosions and fires at their oil plants, uh, it really boosted the price of oil and gasoline immediately overnight did that saudi explosion effect last for a long time when it comes to crude prices yeah you know it was it was a huge move in terms of price action for uh the commodities and you look at crude oil i mean i think it jumped uh 10 or 12 percent there the next day and uh, you know, I tell this to, to followers and other technical traders all the time, that when you get a huge move on news, something that goes straight up or straight down, especially when it gaps open the next day, meaning it never really traded through those prices during regular trading hours. It just closed one day, say Friday, and then opens Monday at 15 or 13% higher. You've got to be really aware of the risk involved. I mean, so many people were telling me, you know, they're getting into crude. Crude's going to $78, $80 a barrel. And, I mean, to me, it's okay. It had a huge gap up, which is not good. It gapped into resistance. And anything news-based that goes straight up is usually fizzles right back out. And we see at least half the gain uh, given back within a few days. And in most cases, you see almost all of it given back. And that's exactly what we've seen in crude. If you don't get caught up in the emotional side of things and just focus on price action and how price moves, you know, this is what we've seen. It opened high for one day. The next day, sold off, gave back almost almost half, per, uh, half percent of it. And then it's been flagging sideways in a continuation pattern, meaning – the previous move was a drop the day before. It's been moving sideways, and here we are back in freefall mode, and we've, we're almost at 100% gap fill, meaning we're almost back to where it traded before the news. So uh, from a technical standpoint, it was um, I usually don't in, get involved trading that stuff because it does carry high risk. There could be more headline news events that could cause these random spikes. But overall, it was a beautiful move in terms of huge gap, Everyone was emotional and uh, getting along, and here it goes in the opposite direction of the news. Also, too, I mean, if you're thinking logically, the world was awash in crude. North America is energy self-sufficient, and uh, if somebody else needed oil, I'm sure Canada would be more than willing to provide it. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. That's the thing, right? Something happens overseas. It means nothing with the supply that we have here yet the prices instantly jump and it's just the way the markets have always moved but yeah it doesn't it doesn't make sense you see that translate over into gasoline gasoline prices jump in value at the pumps i mean none of this is really going to have a, a huge effect not instantly on on that type of thing over here so uh yeah there's a, there's it's emotional when stuff like that happens you just you know there's a ton of fear and a ton of greed People who are fearful of missing out, they pile in, and uh, there's another band camp that they're greedy. They want to catch some of this run, and they pile in. And I mean, it just creates this feeding frenzy and these extreme movements. And those, to me, are the most accurate trading signals. Just like in the equities markets yesterday, we saw a big move down. The stock market was testing key support. And the emails are flowing in, and the VIX is up, and uh, the put-call ratio is rocketing, meaning everyone is panicking. And to me, I'm just, everyone's freaking out that the market's falling. And I'm like, this is, at this point, this is the market at support. It's a washout low. The market is trying to scare everyone out. We should have some knee-jerk reaction in the next day or two. And we're seeing that happen today. 
and we can we can talk about that. But there's a huge shift from fear and where money's going over the next uh, a couple weeks here, and it could catch a lot of people off guard. We'll have more with Chris Vermeulen right after this. Grand Portage Resources, Herbert Gold Project in Southeast Alaska highlights increased gold resource, indicated and inferred, of 860,000 ounces, in excess of 10 grams per ton gold. Expansion drilling is planned on the Herbert Gold property for the summer of 2019. Grand Portage Resources trading symbols are GPG on the TSX Venture, GPTRF on the OTCQB, and GPB on Frankfurt. For more information, please visit our website, grandportage.com. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, what's your view on the equity markets? Yeah, the equities markets have been moving really well. I mean, August was a, a, a tough month in terms of it was trading in a big range and we were waiting for a breakout move, but we saw that breakout to the upside and all September we've been running higher and, and now we're forming this beautiful consolidation at this point. Uh, you'd say it's a, a bull flag, which is a, a continuation pattern, meaning we ran up from late August into this high, and now market has been pulling back and sideways in a very controlled manner, and it's come down to a key support zone, and the markets do need to hold. Today, um, this week, they need to hold the lows because it's very significant support level, and it's really interesting because we're long the equities market, and I was telling subscribers or showing subscribers, this is where our stop is. This is a critical line in the sand on the chart that if broken, the market is going to collapse and go back down to potentially test the August lows. And so we put out what is called a um, uh, a stop on close, meaning we're putting a stop at that price, but we don't get executed intraday. So if price goes below that stop level, but then rallies through the end of the day, we don't get stopped out. It has to close the day below our stop. And the market loves to do this. It's, it's doing the inverse on metals, which we can talk about in a minute, but today we saw the market flush down early in the morning. That critical line in the sand was breached, and the volume on the futures and the ETFs for the SP500 spiked to uh, an enormous level. Everyone got stopped out right at that low of the day, massive volume, and then the markets reversed, and they've been rocketing higher ever since. And it's just amazing how the market can do this when there's extreme emotion. I mean, the picture becomes clear and clear of how you need to trade it when you're a technical trader. So if the stock market is put in a bottom today, that means the risk off like bonds, utilities, uh, precious metals and miners should be doing the opposite, which is exactly what they've done. They rallied up. They pushed deep into resistance yesterday, this morning, and they've reversed right back down. And it, there's going to be a big shift here. As long as the equity market holds and starts to go higher, then we are going to see a very big correction in precious metals, much larger than I think people are expecting. But you got to know that a big pullback in metals, this big three-wave correction that could be taking place here, is a very bullish thing. The markets are a little overdone. They need to have this bigger correction, more than just a week long. Uh, it needs to be a month or so, and that sets the tone for the next major run-up where gold takes a run 17, 1800, and beyond. So uh, the markets have been moving really well lately, and uh, today is a really critical pivot point. Metals could be, have put in a short-term top for a couple of weeks. The equities market could be starting another major leg to new highs, and I think those moves could catch a lot of traders off guard. What's happening with the so-called safe havens? Well, the safe havens, I mean, they've, they've all had a, a fairly nice run. Um, you look at utilities, which is the most recent uh, play. Utilities, to me, was the least amount of risk to move into a safe haven simply because um, the, uh, the precious metals market looked like it was primed and ready for a longer consolidation or pullback. 
So instead of moving into precious metals, um, a couple of weeks ago, we were looking at moving into utilities, and utilities moved straight up, uh, continued to move up into the highs uh, this week. And we've closed that out because we feel as though the safe havens are more or less done. But if you're looking at the safe havens, uh, utilities are a little overextended to the upside. They're ready for a pullback. If we take a look over at the chart of bonds, bonds have had a, a nice two-week rally. They came right into resistance, also the 20-day moving average, and uh, more or less they had a cycle high yesterday, and we're starting to see a rollover today. So all the precious metals are in this, a very similar boat. They rallied up to resistance. They are more or less putting in a short-term cycle top, and they're all rolling over today. So there is a lot of potential here for a, um, a one- to three-week pullback in metals and miners and safe havens in general. Uh, but it'll be a very bullish thing. I think bonds and utilities will, will probably still hold up. Actually, I think bonds will hold up the best if you want to stay in a safe haven. Um, but I think metals will have a way better opportunity in about two or three weeks to have way more upside because I think that are the next leg up in metals will be uh, uh, something extremely powerful. We'll have more with Chris Vermeulen right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the 2019 drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, what's your view on interest rates? Are they going to go flat or negative in North America? Ooh, that's a good question. Now, I don't follow interest rates too much, but uh, based on my gut feeling and kind of what I've seen in the past, is I feel as though they're going to slowly drift themselves lower. And um, uh, I don't know if they'll go negative or not. I, I can't see America kind of adopting that. I mean, I've seen Trump tweeting about stuff saying, you know, bring the rates down to zero. You don't need to go negative, he says. Bring them down to zero or almost zero let America refinance so everyone can cut all their, their, their costs. Um, so, I mean, you got to wonder if he's got any waiting. I mean, I, the Fed and Trump, I think, are buttheads a little bit. So who knows what will happen. But I do feel as though rates uh, will start to um, flatline and eventually continue to pick up speed to the downside. But I think we need to see more signs of a recession kick in. And um, before they start really cutting more rates, they're kind of like bullets for the Fed to try and save the day. And I, I think there's some some interesting things going on. I, I feel as though things are crumbling behind the financial scenes. So I think they're going to try and save their bullets as much as they can until maybe a little later in the game. But, I mean, the Fed is so – it seems so random in what they do and their timing. It's really hard to gauge. They, to me, they're not uh, – they're not so much a technical analyst. They follow, you know, I think they're more or less puppets and they follow data that is very lagged. Bitcoin, has it made its split because you said it was either going to charge up or, or take a drop down? What did it do when we, after we talked two weeks ago? Yeah, well, it ended up trading right into that apex, that point, this big consolidation pattern that you and I talked about uh, a couple of weeks ago. And, Two days ago, it broke to the downside, and I mean, it dropped uh, about 10%, and it's down another uh, six or seven percent again here today. So it has broken to the downside. The momentum is down, and I think it still has a lot of room to go. I think uh, uh, right now it is trading. Uh, let me just uh, take a look at the chart here. Right now, it is trading at 8,400, and I have a feeling that's the halfway mark. I think we could go down to about the 63 maybe 6,000 mark to the downside. So I, I still think there's a couple thousand dollars downside in this move. Now, it might trade sideways for another two or three days, but the last time 
we've seen moves moves like this form. Bitcoin is pretty quick. It only takes a couple sideways days and then just continues the trend. There's a lot of, I, I think, a lot of digital currency traders. Um, I would, I would, I'm, I may not be correct, but in my opinion, they're more millennials and they don't have like investing and emotional control when it comes to investing. So they're very they panic, and that's why I think we see a lot of these big moves happen fast where it starts to break, it gets ugly, and everybody just bails out, and they don't even, you know, uh, it just happens fast. So overall, I think Bitcoin currencies are a very emotional market, and that's why we see these moves, these massive rallies, massive sell-offs, and then when you get a breakout like this, something this big, it's just a catastrophe. It's either drops all the way down to the next key support level, or it rallies up to the next major resistance, it happens very quickly. So I'm bearish on Bitcoin. I think it's going lower. Uh, it's tough to trade the way it moves. It's kind of like a big, quick one-day move, and, and that's it. So it is tough to kind of catch those plays unless you jump on board. But, uh, yeah, you got to be aware of Bitcoin. Chris, how would you sum up what's going on right now? Well, I think um, as a short-term trader, I think you should be – uh, very cautious where we are because all the markets are at key pivot points. The stock market is trying to hold support. The safe havens and precious metals are stuck under resistance. And we just need to see if we're going to get some follow-through buying in stocks to go higher and if the precious metals are going to continue to roll over and go lower because there's a lot of upside in stocks, I think. Once we confirm another update here in stocks, I think it'll be off to the races, and we've got a couple of weeks of higher prices, so there's a lot of upside there. If that happens, there's definitely going to be a lot of downside potential. Um, inverse ETFs are shorting the metals markets uh, because I think we'll see a multi-week pullback in the uh, safe haven play. So those, to me, are the two standout moves. you got to be aware that we're just starting potential major trends here uh, downside for metals and upside for equities. We just need to see if it's getting traction. So that's uh, what to keep your eye on. Chris, thank you so much for chatting with us. Hey, thanks for having me on the show, Jim. My guest has been Chris Vermeulen from the thetechnicaltraders.com. If you have any questions for Chris or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Find us on Twitter at Howstreet, our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.